what's up my name is Gabby welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna be spending a cozy fall day together I have some plans for today like I think I'm going to drive down to town I'm gonna get an acai bowl maybe we'll do a little bit of book shopping I also later tonight I want to try out this pumpkin pasta recipe that I've never tried before that I've actually been wanting to try this recipe for years now and so I thought today would be the perfect day to do it so let's get going I'm so excited <laughs> What's up? Good morning! It's about 11.30 in the morning right now. I just went to Robex and I got an acai bowl because of course I did because that would be like a typical thing that I would do is just to start the morning by going and getting an acai bowl. I was able to, you know, eat in this little park that's like right down the street from the Robex because this park is so beautiful. All the freaking trees are changing over here. They're all red and they're all yellow and it just feels like the perfect fall vibe over here and every time I come over here, there's nobody here. Like it's it's completely deserted I don't understand but anyways um, I've been listening to black sheep on audio pretty much all morning I'm now about 25% of the way through the audiobook I don't know what it is about Rachel Harrison's books but I always get the urge to want to read these like every October you know because she is also the author of cackle and such sharp teeth and like those books are just so much fun for the month of October and in black sheep this one is about this woman who's gonna be returning to the small town where she grew up in where her family is gonna be having this wedding she's going back home for a wedding what I didn't realize I mean I thought it was like gonna be like a religious story you know and like it is but the family back home they're kind of like a cult who believes in Satan and they're all like hail Satan and like they're Satanists which is something that I was not expecting with this I don't remember if I had read that that was like in the description or not but I was like oh shit okay and it's interesting because our protagonist her mom is kind of like a well-known actress like she's pretty famous and so when she was at her job she was like living in New York City and she was working as a waitress and like she would get people saying like oh my god have you ever heard of this actress because you look just like her and you know people didn't know obviously that she's like her daughter but she's like one of the only people that has like left the small town she's left you know the satanist the satan worshiping like she's not part of their community anymore and so it's interesting because she's going back to this community just for this wedding to be there and so we get that trope of like somebody who like left their small town and is going back and then things are getting all stirred up from the past again and so far it's been fun I don't know I really liked the opening like the first chapter was very entertaining because she was like working as a waitress and then this guy was just being gross and obnoxious in the restaurant and something happened with him it was like really entertaining like I really liked the way that this book opened and I don't know there's just something about Rachel Harrison's writing that is just so readable you know like her books are just very readable they're very fun to read so I'm just gonna continue listening to this one on audio pretty much throughout the day I'm on the way right now to go to Goodwill because I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of you know book shopping maybe a little bit of thrift shopping as well I don't really know I feel like my goodwill is very hit or miss so if it ends up being more of a miss then I also could go to my local value village I do have some stuff that I could drop off as donations too which I could do and I like to drop it off at the value village because then they give you like a 20% off coupon so that you can buy stuff in there and get 20% off which is always really nice so let's go do a little bit of thrift shopping book shopping we'll see what we can find
I just got out of Value Village. Earlier when I was at Goodwill, I was shocked. There were literally no books there. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been to this Goodwill, so like I had no idea what to expect with their selection, but it was weird because usually the books are at the front of the store and they moved the book area to like the very back of the store and all of the shelves were like so empty. I'm like, what is going on? I think my Goodwill is dying or something because what was that? But on the bright side, I was able to pick up a few clothing items from Goodwill, so like it wasn't a total waste of time, but I did end up coming over to Value Village afterwards because I had some stuff that I wanted to donate and like I said you know they have the 20% off coupon so I was able to use my 20% off coupon at Value Village even though Value Village does have a major much bigger book selection I wasn't able to find anything in the book section unfortunately most of the books that I was looking at I either the ones that I was interested in I already own them or I was like planning to get those from the library so like I just didn't really see a need to get any of those books but like the book selection at Value Village is like miles above the book selection at my local Goodwill like I don't know maybe it's because since you get the 20% off coupon when you donate to Value Village maybe people prefer to donate here so like they just have a better selection I mean I don't know if Goodwill does anything like that when you donate because I haven't donated to Goodwill in like literally forever I always come to Value Village because it's so much easier luckily also at Value village I was also able to find a couple different cute clothing items that I'm really excited about so I'll have to show you a little clothing haul when I get home so you can see everything that I got but while I'm in the area you know I'm right by ugh, you can't see because this car but I'm right next to a Winco and I wanted to run in and grab a few different grocery items because of the dinner that I'm trying to make tonight I wanted to make that like pumpkin pasta kind of dinner tonight so I need to pick up a few ingredients so that I can make that dinner tonight and so I'm gonna run into the Winco and do a few little grocery things and then on the way home, I might have to stop by Starbucks and pick up one of those, you know, pumpkin chai, the chai lattes with the pumpkin foam on top, because that is like one of the most fall drinks to me, and it's my favorite Starbucks fall drink this fall. Like, I'm just obsessed with it. So we're gonna do that. I might also get one of their little um, pumpkin cream cheese muffins, because those are also freaking top tier and like such a good pastry. I don't know. I haven't really tried any of the other fall pastries though, so maybe I should try something else. I also forgot to update that I am still listening to Black Sheep on audio. I'm actually 64% of the way through the book so far. This book is just absolutely flying. I think it's just been really entertaining. I really like the main character. I like the situation with her family and how awkward it is. I was even thinking though, I was like, oh my god, because there's some parts in this audiobook where the narrator is like chanting and they're like, hail Satan, you know, because that's what the family does like they're all like hail satan but i'm like oh my god i have to like turn down the audiobook because i'm like if anybody around me can like hear this audiobook i don't want them to get the wrong idea and be like what the fuck is this bitch doing you know so like i i just didn't want that to happen so i was like okay i need to like keep my volume low while i'm listening to this like oh my god but it's entertaining i don't know i just got to a scene that was like really gory that i was like oh man every now and then i forget that this is a horror book you know because it's written in such a like I don't know, like a cozy horror way or like contemporary way almost. That sometimes I forget that this is a horror book and that some of it is just like, ooh. So I do enjoy those parts and I don't know, it's looking like it's probably gonna be like a three star book, like nothing super special, but I just really enjoy reading it. I don't know, I just find Rachel Harrison's writing to be so fun.
doing all of the things, I did end up getting my little chai pumpkin. It's so freaking good. And then I decided to go and try the apple baked croissant instead of the pumpkin muffin one because I haven't tried this one before and it's so good. This has no right being as soft and squishy as it is. Like this is way better than I thought it was gonna be. I also got a notification from my library that some of my library holds were ready to pick up. So I swung by the library to grab these. And this is a manga that I am so excited to read. This one, I actually heard that it's like one of the scariest mangas of all time and that it will like make you think about it when you go to bed. I don't know, I've just heard that it's absolutely terrifying. And I also heard that the uh, uh, the author, I forget what the manga authors are called. I think they're called manga cause. Is that what an author's called? I don't know, but this guy who wrote these books, he had to take a break because he was so scared of what he was writing and he thought that, I guess he was like getting paranoid that the things he was writing about started happening to him. Like. So um, I'm gonna read this today. I'm gonna read this this afternoon because I have to. I have to, right? Sounds great. Anyways, um, I just got home. I put away all the groceries and I came home and I saw that there's two Amazon packages, which one of them I definitely know what it is. And then the other one, I'm not too sure. So I thought I would open them on camera. Why not? This one, it feels like a book. <gasps> oh my God, it's a book. <gasps> oh my, ugh. my roommate is a vampire. <gasps> Who sent me this? Oh my gosh, I hope it's good. Spooky season treat from Amy. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is so sweet. Okay, the other day on my Patreon reading experience, I was talking about how I should read this for the month of October because it's like, my roommate is a vampire and then freaking Amy just sent it. Oh my God, that is so sweet. Dude, I forgot I even put this on my Amazon wish list. This works out perfect. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm definitely gonna have to fit this one into October because uh, are you kidding me? My roommate is a vampire? Like, come on. <laughs> that is so kind. Thank you so much, Amy. <sighs> Okay, and then this next package, I definitely know what it is. I ended up ordering off of Amazon. They had their Prime Day recently. Ugh, okay, so one of the things that I got are these pants, which I'm gonna have to do a try on with these because I don't know how they're gonna fit, but I've been eyeballing these black pants for like so long because they're kind of like cozy, but like work pants still because they have like the kind of material that it's like rainproof or something, I don't know. But I've been eyeballing these for a long time. I've been wanting them. So I'll have to try them on to make sure they fit. But they were on sale for Prime Day. And then also I ended up getting this stand for like a PC, like a computer monitor stand. I don't have a PC monitor computer yet. But I decided to get this because it was on sale for Prime Day. It was like a big sale. It's like 50% off or something. So I decided to go ahead and get it because this is one that I've heard about. So I'm gonna have to reorganize my desk at some point and set this up because it looks pretty, like it's gonna be decently sized big because it has to fit a monitor on it. So very excited about all these. And then let me take you upstairs so I can show you my Goodwill haul. Okay, I have tried on the pants and they're super cute. I love how they turned out. Let me set you down so I can show you. So the ankles, are kind of like scrunched up a little bit. I love too that it has one of these so you can like tighten it if you want to and then you can just tuck this little string like back behind the pants so you don't have to see it. But I love these. There's like all these pockets on the side and the pockets are actually really soft too. I just love the way that it looks on the bottom with the ankles like that. All right, and now let's get through the Goodwill and the Value Village haul and let me show you all the cute little clothes that I got. So the first thing is gonna be this plaid. Look at this, isn't this nice? This was only $3 at Value Village and it's just so nice. Like, I don't know, I don't have any plaids that are like this kind of color. I really love the like blue and green and I just think it's gonna be so cozy. This one's a medium, so I think it'll be like the perfect size. I hope it's not like too tight on me, but I think it's gonna be so nice. I also ended up getting this shirt. This one was $5 at Value Village, but it's nice because it's actually cropped. So I think it would look so nice because I have so many cropped shirts that I wear and I like the idea of having this that I can put over it that's also cropped. So I think that this one will look super cute. I don't know if you could see it that well, but there's another look at it. Isn't it cute? I think it's so nice. Oh, and then this one that I found, I'm pretty excited about this. This was another one at Value Village. Look at the, uh, it's a Stranger Things hoodie and it's really cool because it's like two different colors. It has like bleed, it just bleeds into the other color. Yeah, oh, isn't that so nice? I just love the bold red Stranger Things and this one is a medium, but it feels like it's gonna be a little bit big on me, which is exactly the kind of vibe that I would want with this kind of sweatshirt anyways. So like, oh, isn't that so cute? Okay, and then starting on the Goodwill stuff that I was able to find, this one is so cute. This is a like 
very nice knit blue sweater. This one actually is from Old Navy on the tag, so I feel like that's a good sign. And it's just so soft. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera how soft this is, but it's very soft and it looks like in perfect condition. Sorry, the wind is like very creepily blowing my door open. And then I also ended up getting this shirt just because I love... I love a good navy blue shirt, okay? I love it. It's got a little pocket. It's cute. And then the last two shirts that I ended up finding at Goodwill, this one I'm really excited about because of the color. It is a bodysuit, which I don't always love everything that's a bodysuit like this, but this one just looks so cute. And the sleeves are like a little bit like ruffled or like fluffy. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm obsessed with this color. Is this not the most beautiful color? And then the last thing that I got is this shirt that's a new day. And it's just this white, really nice shirt. This is actually that brand that's like really popular at Target, I'm pretty sure. This one's really nice and these sleeves are a little bit like ruffled as well, which I think looks really cute and really nice. And this material is so soft and it's so nice. There's no stains on it or anything. It's like a perfectly nice, good quality white shirt. Like this is so thick. It's about, it's just after three o'clock in the afternoon right now. I think I'm going to start a load of laundry so that I can get all of these clothes washed because you gotta, you gotta wash your clothes after you buy thrift, thrift shopping clothes because you don't know where they've been. So I'm gonna get the laundry started, wash all of the clothes that I bought. I'm gonna finish drinking my chai latte that I got. And then I think I'm gonna read the PTSD radio manga and just see how scary it is. I'm so terrified to read this book, but I have to know, you know, like I have to know. <laughs> just finished reading PTSD Radio Volume 1. This one actually had Volume 1 and Volume 2 in it, I'm pretty sure. But holy shit, this was so fucking creepy. This was so creepy. I think this was the most unsettling manga that I've ever read before, for sure. It's one of the most unsettling, disturbing horror books I've ever read, just in general. This book really made me want to, like, chop off all my hair. Like, if you know, you know! Because there's definitely a lot of creepy things with, like, the idea of something, like, reaching out and grabbing onto your hair. It's just so, um, gory and descriptive. This book is just so visually disturbing. Like, some of these drawings, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine trying to read this at night. Are you kidding me? I would probably, like, have a heart attack trying to read this at night because it's so creepy. Like I'm gonna be thinking about that freaking face. And I think this story is really interesting because we're not really following just like one character. We're kind of following a bunch of people in this town and it seems like there's this curse or something like that in this town. There's something going on. And so we do follow like a number of different characters throughout the story, but it's not really like about the characters or their story. It's more just about like this curse or this creature. Like I don't even know what the fuck this is. Gosh, I feel like the visuals in this story are just gonna stay with me so much. Like, that was truly some really creepy shit. I feel like this is scary not only for, like, the idea of something and grabbing you from behind, but also just, like, the idea that somebody's, like, watching you while you're asleep or the idea that anything could be, you know, watching you. Like, the idea of, like, birds just, like, watching you, following you, things lurking out of the shadows, and also, like, the distorted face thing also just really freaks me out. 
Like the idea of someone's face just like really being distorted in the most like unnatural ways, like the lips going up and like, you know, kind of like how this cover is doing. Like, oh, absolutely not. Like, I don't know why that scares me so much, but it really does. Like that shit really gets to me. I know there are currently two other volumes of this published or there's two more collections, I guess, that look like this. So I think there's six volumes total. And I know my library has the second volume. I already put it on hold so that I can get it as soon as possible. And if you're into manga and you haven't read this, I would highly recommend checking it out, especially at this, you know, time of year when we're in October and like spooky time. This is so creepy. I would also recommend if you're not even into manga and you just want something that'll be actually scary and like weird and creepy, I think you should check this one out because I think this would be a good manga to start with because it is genuinely super creepy. And I have to give this five stars not only just because I'm so creeped out and it came and it did what it needed to do, but also because of the creativity. I feel like this is one of the most like unique and like original kind of ideas that I've seen as far as like horror goes. So I'm really intrigued to read more from this author and to get deeper into the series because this shit is, oh my gosh, like it's so disturbing. I'm kind of glad that I got this from the library because like I don't want this sitting on my shelves. You know, I'm like, this is creepy. Like I don't want this face like staring at me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> but yeah, it was good. It lives up to the hype. I thought it was fantastic. So that's always great. Um, anyways, now I think I'm gonna get started on my pumpkin pasta dinner recipe. I'm so excited. I'm going to link the recipe that I'm making down in the description so that you can, you know, try it out yourself if you want. But I'm really excited about this because I've never actually attempted any kind of like pumpkin pasta recipe before. I don't even know if I would like pumpkin in my pasta. Like, I don't know if that's something that I would even enjoy or not, but we're gonna give it a go because why not? cinnamon and nutmeg spice in this so this is like lamb because it's a lot of milk and pumpkin well at least we have this ginormous salad so we won't starve <laughs> It is much later in the night. It's just a little bit after 10.30. As you saw, you know, the pumpkin pasta was not the biggest success that I've ever had. I did follow the recipe and I made everything correctly, but I don't know. I guess I'm just not a big fan of it, which does make me a little bit sad because I've been wanting to make this recipe for literally years. But I guess, I don't know. I just don't think the flavors of uh, pumpkin and like pasta really mix well together. It just tasted kind of bland. I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. And so to make up for that, we ended up making the pumpkin cookies, which I know might have just sounds like it's way too much pumpkin, but luckily the pumpkin cookies were a hit. <laughs> And we've had those pumpkin cookies before, so I wasn't worried about those. Like, it wasn't like I was trying them for the first time. But still, the pumpkin cookies are absolutely delicious. And I think pumpkin and pastries and, like, you know, desserts work best together. I don't know about pumpkin in pasta. I just didn't think it was very delicious. We were gonna try to, like, you know, end the night with, like, a spooky movie or something like that. But, you know, we ended up just watching Big Brother, which happens, you know. And then we watched a lot of YouTube videos. I feel like that's the way a lot of my nights end up wrapping up is with Big Brother or The Amazing Race. Like, I... I just love the reality shows. I mean, we usually watch Love is Blind, but this season is so terrible that we stopped watching it because I was like, fuck that. These people are all so annoying. I can't stand anybody. I have finished listening to the audiobook for Black Sheep. I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending of this book. I mean, why was the epilogue? Okay, just the epilogue was 30 minutes long on the audiobook. I was like, for what? I'm used to epilogue.
prologues just being like a tiny little sliver or just a little something extra at the end of the book, not like so long, like still 30 minutes left on the audiobook. I was like, there's no reason for this. So I didn't care that much, I guess. I don't know. I feel like this one might actually be my least favorite from this author, at least compared to the other Rachel Harrison books that I've read. Yeah, I think Such Sharp Teeth is my favorite. That was the one that I gave four stars and then Cackle I gave three stars and then her other book, The Return, I forgot that I've read that one as well, but I actually DNF that one. So I guess I liked this one more than The Return because I actually finished it. But at least in comparison to those other books, I feel like Black Sheep was just okay for me. I mean, I'm probably still gonna end up giving this one three stars, even though I didn't like this one as much as I liked Cackle and like some of her others. But this one was okay. And I think the main reason why this one didn't work as much for me is because I don't like love reading about cults and especially like religious cults because I'm not a religious person so I don't tend to care very much about like religion in my horror or in any genre of my books. I feel like when you're following a story that's about a religious cult like the story can only go in so many ways you know like you kind of know exactly where it's going what you're signing up for and it kind of just did everything that I was thinking that it would do. I feel like so oftentimes with books about like religious cults it just gets very repetitive especially towards the end but I don't know I think I am still giving three stars because there's just something about Rachel Harrison's writing and the way that she writes her characters. It just makes me invested and I just have a fun time while I'm listening to them. Like they're not the most memorable books that I've ever read. I mean even last year's book Such Sharp Teeth, like I don't remember too much about it, but her books just have the perfect uh, kind of vibe to them for fall. I also think this one, it got a little like surprising for me towards the end, at least in terms of like how graphic some of the scenes got with the goriness. I was like, oh shit. Like it felt like a step up from some of her other gore and like horror that she's written in her other books. So I don't know, take my review with a grain of salt. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a full fall cozy day. I hope you had a great time. I know I had a great time. And let me know if this is something you would like to see again from me, you know, before the end of the season. Like, would you like to see another video like this in the month of November where maybe I have a little bit more luck with my book shopping? I feel like I went book shopping and I didn't really have any luck there. I mean, I know I did find some thrifty clothing items, so at least there's that. But yeah, let me know if you would like to see this again. Maybe I could make a video like this, you know, once a month while it's this kind of season just because I feel like I love making like cozy little vlogs like this while it's like fall and winter time. So let me know what you would think about that and thank you so so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!